So we just got done learning about the root mean square speed. That has an influence um, on two other ideas. Um, one of them is effusion, which is the passing of gas molecules through a small hole. So that's why you fill a helium, you put helium in a balloon and it starts to shrink over time. The gas molecules are effusing out of the um, latex of the balloon. Diffusion is the other idea. Diffusion is simply the mixing of a gas into empty space or into another gas or gases. So you open a bottle of perfume and the molecules diffuse into the air and so eventually you smell that perfume um, throughout the entire area. So how does that influence anything? So let's go back to our molecules of nitrogen and helium. Um, so they're moving at the same, if they're at the same temperature, we know that helium being smaller is moving faster than the um, nitrogen because it is bigger. All right, so as these two things hit the wall, what's going to happen? Well, in terms of penetrating ability, let's say that this is a porous wall as opposed to a nice solid wall. Um, the one with the lighter, faster moving molecules is the one that's going to be able to pass through the wall more easily. So that's why helium balloons deflate faster than balloons that are just filled with air from your breath because helium is a much smaller molecule than your breath, which is CO2 and oxygen and, and argon and nitrogen and so forth. All right, so um, in terms of the rate and the idea of effusion, um, the rate of escape of A um, divided by the rate of escape of B is equal to their um, the ratio of their root mean square speed. So we also know that the root mean square speed is equal to the square root of 3RT divided by the molar mass. So far, so good. All right, so at this point, however, if you have two gases under the same conditions, R cancels out, T cancels out, heck, even the 3 cancels out. So you're left with the ability to simplify this a lot more. You are able to take it so you have 1 over divided by 1 over, which means you can put the mass of B on top. So the root mean square speed ratio is equal to the square root of the inverse molar masses, which is equal to the rate of escape. So all three of these are set equal. So this guy is just the derivation here. Okay, so you've got this equation to work with. So how much faster is the helium going to escape? Well, helium escaping divided by nitrogen escaping. So you've got the molar mass of nitrogen on top. You've got the molar mass of helium on the bottom. So what do you wind up with? The helium is going to escape over two and a half times faster than the nitrogen will because of their difference in molar masses. Okay, so for effusion, this is what re is referred to as Graham's Law of Effusion, and this works perfectly well. So if you have molecules moving through a, a wall, a, a surface, um, Graham's Law applies perfectly. For diffusion, it's a little bit different. Um, so mixing of molecules, it's not quite as straightforward as what Graham's Law is showing. Um, so Graham's Law of Effusion, here's the example that I was talking about, the helium gas is going to effuse much faster than the nitrogen gas is. Um, but now let's take a look at diffusion. Diffusion employs Graham's Law, but it's a little bit more complicated because if you have molecules in there, there are going to be collisions. And so the molecules 
they don't move in straight paths for a long time. If you have a molecule colliding with anything, it is going to rebound off at some particular angle. It's not going to follow its own path that it was following before. Because of that, because you have the molecules colliding and moving in various directions, diffusion takes a lot longer than what you think it will. Um, and so here's the idea. So you have this one molecule. It's supposed to get over here, but it could, if there's other molecules in, in the container, it'll move and collide with that and then it'll go backwards. And then so you can see that the pathway that it's going to take to get from here to here, this is where it has to diffuse to, but this is the pathway that it's going to take to get there. It's a big difference. So the this is referred to as, well, the distance that it travels without collision is referred to as the mean free path. So the fewer molecules you have, the easier, the, the longer the mean free path is, the more molecules you have, the mean, fr mean, can't say it, mean free path is going to decrease on you. So this is what makes diffusion not quite follow Graham's law perfectly because you will have all these collisions and you have these random pathways going on. The molecule's just not a straight shot um, from one point to another. All right, so again, Graham's law is perfect for effusion, the moving of a molecule or a, a gas through um, a barrier. But diffusion, it only approximates it because of this idea of molecular collisions. Okay, that takes care of um, the idea of effusion and diffusion. The very last video that you watch is going to deal with real gases.